on guys welcome back to the channel here's another video of what we've been doing we've been trying to get my car running we've been trying to get Hugo's car running so we can go to the track get you some track videos but you know we're waiting on parts and hopefully soon you will see a, a track video anyways so I'm gonna show you a little bit of what I'm working on I'm working on this SRT this blue SRT I think I showed last time on the on the last video I install a S257 wall warner. Shout out to uh, AGP turbos that hook it up with a badass price. Um, so if y'all need anything, you know, send an email or go visit their website. We have the new turbo. I'm running a kinetic creation boost box, plug and play harness. Of course, I'm gonna be redoing all these lines. We've got a new blow above. And I cleaned the whole engine bay because over here they have the computer over here and all kinds of weird stuff. So I'm still gonna clean it up a little bit more and then get it to the dyno and, and get it get it all tuned and everything. I also got uh, the turbo. Uh, so they have an old turbo. Let me see if I can show you. Here's the old turbo. And as you can see, this is like a Turbonetics. Old, old turbo, five bolt housing with some weird b-band but you know it was leaking a lot of oil so i took the bore warner to elite performance and i told him like hey man i need something like this on that one so i don't have to change the whole exhaust system on this one and man they did a badass job look at that they welded an extension with a b-band and that thing is like bolt right on i mean perfect so did a pretty good job now I have all this cover right now because I'm gonna be doing some porn polish, which I hate doing, on a, man, what the fuck did I do with it? All right, to a um, oil housing. So if you can see the hole right there, it's like pretty much straight down and then it's straight. So we're gonna porn polish here to make the oil flow a lot smoother. And uh, this one, it's gonna go to the blue SRT. I'm gonna do one for Mark motor. I'm gonna do one for Tony's also, uh, just to help a little bit with the with the oil. So I'm gonna be showing you that. Thursday, we're gonna go to Ugo's house. We're gonna pull the dash. We're gonna put the all the AC stuff out of it because we're gonna be doing a cage. So we're gonna have to take it to Elite Performance to put the cage. Mark's motor, hopefully we get it all done, which is, you know, some there. Need to put the oil pan and simple shit. But what I'm gonna do on his too is, I'm gonna be opening this up. So I'm gonna cut this plate open and leave the screen on it so you can have a better oil flow. So I'm gonna be doing that. I have all this uh, tarp because whenever you do porn polish, I mean, fucking aluminum and metal, whatever you do porn polish and this goes everywhere. So I wanna make sure that everything stay here and I can clean it up easy and then I'm good to go. To do the porn polish, I'm gonna be using this wheel and then also gonna be using this ones and you can find a kit like this on harbor freight and um you know it looks something like this you have all this and the rod and all that stuff so we're gonna be using that the bits for the porn polish you can buy them online uh you can also buy it from uh i got my set from uh mac tools it's all beat up but it's going with different sizes and all that stuff pretty good and you can use the metal one for aluminum because the aluminum one, they're really aggressive. And when you're doing something small like that, you know, this is the aluminum one. So when you do something small like that, the metal one just works just fine. I'm going to start pouring polish in it and then I'll show you guys the finished product of that. bien cabrón poco a poco fue creciendo este chavalón mi madre con su respeto ella me educó los consejos de mi padre siempre llevo yo él fue quien me ha enseñado a ser verdadero y dijo portate mal con quien son culero y desde ese momento mi vida cambió y ahora véanme bien loco y bien tumbado all right guys so it's all done i'm not perfect for this shit but it 
come out pretty good. So let me show you. Uh, look at that. So smooth. You got an angle to it so it can flow better. And then I did some over here just to match it with the gasket right here. So if I put this one here, let me line it up. See, lined up, well, whenever the holes are lined up, there. Lined up, so it lined up perfect with the oil pan. So here's the, the stock one. You know, that's how the stock one looks like. So if you put the gasket on the stock one, Let's see if we can see the difference. See the extra meat right there? So, it's going to match it. And then, look at that. So, big difference. So, it works pretty good. So, Let's check this side. You can kind of see the different on both. Works pretty good. So I'm gonna do that one also. And then one more. And then we install it. We should be good to go. Let me uh let me finish the other one. Then I will get you an update on this one whenever it's done and, and ready to go. Like I say, it's it's a lot of people out there that are way better than me, but you know it works really good. You can do it yourself if you kind of feel comfortable. Um, you can always just use this, the sandpapers from Harbor Freight. They're pretty cheap, and I mean, you can buy one of those probably on the, on the forums or Facebook, whatever, for like super cheap, so you can practice, and then you'll be good to go. So all you want to do is put an angle instead of going straight, straight down like this. You want to put an angle to it so the oil flows a lot better. Let me get back to work, and um, I'll see you guys in a little bit. What's going on, guys? Or como decimos acá, que pedation. What? About to finish it. And then I saw a post or a comment on YouTube that somebody wanted to know how to do a boost box. And well, that's what I'm doing on this car. Well, that's one of the things that I'm doing on this car. I'm gonna show you how to do a boost box. On this car, I'm using the plug and play uh, kinetic uh, harness. You can see it right here. All right, so. I got everything right up all the way over here inside and um, I just went ahead and put it right there it's a lot easier obviously the the kinetic is plug and play pretty much you you plug the the tip sensor the map sensor and then you have three wires that goes into the back of the radio uh, kinetic does it that way because you have signal you got power and ground behind the radio so he put all three on there that's one way the other way is with this thing you know the regular harness that comes with it um, of course you got your your ground right here and then you have your power the red one right here then you have uh, let's see, you got the blue one, the blue one right here, which will go to the tip sensor, to the blue wire, as you can see right here, that one right there, the blue wire, so you will connect these two blue ones together, and then you will pass the green one into the map sensor, and you will put the, the green one, let me see, yeah, the green one right here, and it's fucking wires alone. So then you put the green one into the green connector on the harness uh, right there. So you just wanna, you're not gonna cut the harness completely. You're just gonna peel it out and then solder this in there and then put some electrical tape and then you should be good to go. Um, so it's green wire with green wire. So green wire on the map sensor and then green wire on the harness and then blue for the tip sensor you have a green and orange wire on the map sensor so that's gonna, that's gonna be the only green one so you're gonna do green on green on the map sensor 
blue blue on the tip sensor then you're gonna have let's see because kinetics does it by color so it's just really really nice if you get the plug and play because it comes with this right so this is the wire so you can see it's blue and black which is the boost cylinder number two right here so you just pull those out put the kinetic one and you're good to go if you're doing the other harness it's different that one's gonna be the explanation on the website is pretty pretty good on um, the boost cylinder number two i believe it is yeah number two you're gonna cut both of the wires right? you're gonna cut the white the black one and the blue one you're gonna cut you're gonna cut this two but you want to pull the wire at least back this way and then you cut it right here then you're gonna put the orange wire the orange wire is gonna go to the sensor so you're gonna cut it right here let me focus the camera right you're gonna cut it right here and this cable going to the sensor you're gonna put the orange one and then on the black one you're gonna put that one to the ground i'm gonna disconnect the harness right now and then i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about so the black one is gonna go to ground and then the orange one is gonna go oh the blue one is gonna go to the orange one that's how the boost box is gonna control the, the boost with a solenoid then you got this resistor that you're gonna put in line with these two wires which i'm gonna show you once i cut it on here so the checking light won't come on if you don't care about checking the line that you don't need this you don't have to put it on but it's really nice kinetic also send you one that's already heat 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 shrink all good to go but i don't know what the fuck i did i can find it so we're gonna use that one so i'm trying to obviously i'm gonna do different lines on this car but i'm gonna focus on the same colors as the oem one so y'all don't get confused so you got your green one you know coming from your turbo and to solenoid number two on the top, right? That's direct like that. And then you're gonna have your Y1 on here on cylinder number one on the bottom, or if you wanna call it mid. On the middle, it's gonna go to the tip. So I put this adapter right here. Uh, Modern Performance will sell you one with the adapter already on it, really nice. But if you don't have it, you can just put one of these and you know, it goes really uh, smooth. It's one of those T connection, but it's just straight. And then I just put a little bit of silicone to seal it. So anyways, the Y1 is gonna go straight to here. This is where it gets uh, interesting. You're gonna T, and let me see if I have some T's over here. Okay. And I'm gonna show you, and this is gonna work for big turbo or stock turbo with AGP Westgate, stock Westgate, whatever. So you can get something like this from O'Reilly's, AutoZone or whatever. Um, and then you get you one of these. So how this is gonna go is you're gonna have your black wire on number two. Let's see. Okay, so this is cylinder number two. Your green one goes over here, right? So you got your green one, that one goes to the boost. And then you got your black one that goes on the bottom. Now this one's, they can stay open or you can, you, you you can leave this ones in there, or like I said, they can be open on both sides, whatever. And this is the one that's gonna go to the Westgate. If you have a external Westgate like this one, you're gonna connect the black one to the top. I mean, to the bottom, my bad. So you got your Westgate, like that. You're gonna connect this one right here. But before you do that, you're gonna do a T. Hey look, I was looking for this fucking harness. I mean, this vacuum line. All right, I got it, kinda figured it out. Now, this is not gonna go this is not how it's gonna go in this car, but it's it's easy for me to show you that way. So, here it is. You got the bottom of the Westgate, or if you got the external Westgate on a stock turbo, this one goes into the Westgate. Then it comes down to a Y, and then from the Y, one is gonna go straight to the red one, and then of course the red one will go to cylinder number one, I believe so, yeah, cylinder number one on top. You know, right there. The other end of the Y is gonna go down this way into the middle of solenoid number two. And that's pretty much all the vacuums you need. Let's say it all all, all again so we don't we don't get all mixed up. It's, it's a little bit 
confusing when you have all this line going everywhere. The N2 and B website has a pretty good how to like, or, or you can follow it, but it gets confusing because they're using like a stock car with an intake and all that stuff. So like again, this can go into the or original Westgate or the AGP Westgate or whatever. If you own a big turbo, then you can use this one on the bottom, on the bottom of the Westgate. So and then from there, you come to a Y, and then from the Y, one goes to the red one, which is on the top of cylinder number one, and then the other, the other end of the Y goes to the middle of cylinder number two. So that's your black, your OEM black wire goes right here. So remember, you got green and black on one side, and then you got the red and white on the other one, and then in the middle you have black, blue, and pink, and that's for the uh, the other the other side of the turbo. And then you have uh, the blow valve, and then the other one that goes to the uh, throttle body. So you, you're not gonna use that one. If if you have the car all stock, you just leave it how it is, and that's it. If you don't have those vacuum lines, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about this the, the cylinder number three. You're not gonna worry about this one. You get it all set up, you're ready to go. You need to know what kind of spring pressure you have on your uh, Westgate. AGP, if you didn't upgrade the, the spring, I think the original one is like six pound, uh, and then you can upgrade to the eight pound or something like that. I'm gonna show you how to find out what's your spring rate on the Westgate. Now, it's a little bit tricky on an AGP Westgate that's adjustable because if you adjust it too tight, then you're gonna give it so much boost. So you wanna back up the AGP Westgate almost all the way out and to have a little bit of play on the on the manifold on the butterfly i don't i don't have a stuck manifold here somewhere i have a lot of shit that's that's what i have i have another motor there and fucking bunch of shit here so there you go you want to put your agp westgate into it. this can move right that's like super loose and not gonna even no boost so you wanna keep it like loose like this, then you're gonna start tightening your Westgate until you completely close and you have just a little bit of tension. Once you do that, you take it for a ride and then you're gonna read your boost gauge and you're gonna be like, okay, it's giving me five pounds of boost, eight pounds of boost, 10 pounds of boost, whatever it is. You're gonna have to put that on into the boost box and I'm gonna show you here in a little bit because then you're gonna adjust from there. So. If your spring is 10 pounds, so you have 10 pounds on, on first gear, so you're gonna leave it at zero, and I'm gonna show you on the computer. Um, you know what, let me just connect the computer, show you on the computer, it's a lot better. Um, and it's gonna work the same way. If you don't know the spring weight, the spring pressure on your aftermarket Westgate, which I know mine, mine is 15, but if you don't know, and you don't wanna take it apart, you don't wanna risk it, you can put it on your turbo, put all the values on zero on the boost box, take it for a ride, and look at your boost. If you get 10 pounds of boost, you got a 10 pound spring Westgate. If you get seven pounds of boost, it's a seven spring Westgate, so forth and so on. So you don't wanna have a 20 pound spring, 30 pound spring, fucking 25 pound spring, cause that's gonna be your lowest setting on boost. You don't want that because you're gonna spin a lot on first gear. So you wanna start with a 10 pound, and you can triple that, I believe. So you will get up to 30 pounds. If you want more than 30 pounds, you have to switch it to a, maybe a 15, and then you can get up to 45 PSI of boost. Remember, the spring pressure is, is your minimum. You cannot do anything about it, about boost, because that's gonna be your minimum pressure, no matter what you do. You know, unless you wanna stand alone, and that's, that's some other shit. But on the boost box, that's gonna be your minimum setup. So if you're spinning a lot on first gear, because you have a 20 pound spring pressure, take that off, put a 10 pound and then adjust from there. Let me connect the laptop into the boost box and then we go into the settings and I'll show you how to set it up and then how to check some of the stuff to see if everything's connected on the, on the boost box. Before I forget, you still have, so on the front you got the map sensor, you got the tip sensor and then you got your boost solenoid. On the inside, you're gonna have a, a yellow wire, right? So the yellow one, the yellow one, what I can see here. So the yellow one is gonna go to the, into here. You can just press that out on the side. Got some clips. I don't know if you can see, but right here, this one, this purple 
and jello. That's where you're gonna put this on. Again, you're not cutting the harness, you're just gonna solder it right there. Boom. And that's gonna be your signal from the computer. Then your ground, you can always use this bolt right here for your ground. And whenever you remove the fuse box, you remove the fuse back and it's one connection. I think it's on the top. It's two blue wires going together, which I think that's for the wipers. You want to use that one as a power source. So after that, your boost box is completely connected on the electrical side. And I'm talking about these two wires right here, right? So you see that one right there? That's going to be your red wire. See it? Red. That's going to be your power supply right there. It's behind the, the, the fuse box. That's the only one that has two wires going to the same location. So you can, you can fuck it up. That's really easy. Uh, let me connect the laptop into the boost box. Let me connect the battery on this car. And then I'm going to show you how to set up the steps and all the stuff. Hopefully it's not really confusing because I'm trying to do two at the same time. One with the... Uh, plug and play harness and the other one with the regular harness that comes with it. They're pretty simple. Of course, the plug and play harness is really nice. It just boom, boom, boom. You you have to connect three wires only. Now, if you're doing the kinetic harness, you're gonna have to pull your radio out, and on the back of the radio, you're gonna have a red with white, a black with white or all black, and then you're gonna have that purple one with yellow. It's gonna be also in the back of the radio. So kinetics send you the three wires over there so you can hook it up on the back of the radio a lot easier and it's it's good i mean it's really simple on that side because he he pretty much matches the same colors of the wires that you need so you literally just go on the back of the radio and be like oh this one match with this one put it on this one match with this one put it on and you know and get it going good so it's, it's a lot easier like that let me like i said let me connect the battery the battery let me connect the um boost box and then the laptop over here and then we're good to go now on here you're gonna go into the website, you're gonna go into boost box, and then you're gonna go into software. Oh my bad. Let me use that. Okay, then you're gonna click right here. Right there. And it's gonna download the the software for the boost box. I already have mine, so I don't have to download it. I have it um right there. So yeah, let me get the computer connected and then I'll be back. All right, so I'm connected to the Woos box. I'm gonna open the, the app here. Okay, so this is all your setting. You wanna select where your um, USB is connected to and then you're gonna put read. And it's gonna read. And then you have uh, the TPS, how much is reading right now. And then you have the map sensors, the tip sensor. And then you see mine is zero all the way down. So that's pretty much gonna give me um, 15 psi because that's why my uh, that's what my spring pressure is 15 psi. So if you want to check if you have the TPS signal right, then let me move this. There you go. If you want to see if your TPS signal is right, you can with the key on. You can press the gas all the way down and then press read again and that should change. Oh, never mind. I'm on the wrong thing right here. See how it's 2.7? I let it go. I press read again and it says zero. So now you can go halfway on the pedal, press read again, check it, and that's 0.8. So you know that your TPS is working. So you got good signal, um, so that's good. Then you also have your overboosting settings. You you know you can set it up there for 30 pounds, 15 pounds, 10 pounds, whatever you want to do. And then it's got your spring pressure right here. You can put it on there too. And then you select your map sensors. So you can put the stock one, the three bar, four bar, I don't know how high they go. Um, I think they go up to five. Yeah, so they go all the way down to five bar. So if you want on first gear, if you want 
let's see you won let's see you have a 10 pound spring and you won 15 pounds all you're gonna do is add five psi to that so you're gonna do so now on first gear you got five plus the uh, spring pressure so that would be 15 and that's how you adjust your boost box and then of course um second gear you put more third gear you put more and so forth so on so it's not it's not too complicated you just have to remember fucking camera is going everywhere i'm trying to hold the laptop and fucking do the keys and all that shit so my bad for that and then it's got some not fat friendly seed <laughs> so anyways you just have to remember whatever the spring pressure is you're gonna put that plus whatever you want to add so if you want 15 pounds you're gonna be like okay i already have 10 because my spring is 10 but i want 15 you add 5. you want 20 you add 10. you want 25 you add 15. you know so you always want to add the 10 pounds that you already have plus whatever you want to add on here um and that's how you set it up so that's gonna work both ways big turbo uh, non big turbo fucking big wheel stock or whatever you have it's all gonna work the same now for the people that has bore warner turbos make sure that you drill that fitting because the turbo doesn't come um drill so it's blocked so if you put your vacuum how i have it which i'm not gonna use the vacuum for i'm just i'm just showing you guys if you're gonna use that vacuum port you have to drill it before you install it so you can actually have some pressure coming up like I said, I'm not gonna use, I'm not gonna be using that one, but I want to make it simple so you guys know how to um, run all the lines and everything. And I try to use the colors and everything like that. I'm just gonna put all black lines once I'm done with this, and then I'm gonna drive it and, and set it up. It's a little bit complicated. Just rewind the video or ask me some questions or whatever. Um, you know, it, it, it will work. You you will get it. It's it's not too hard. Main part is the lines. Like I say, if you don't know how much boost you have or what, what spring you have, just put all at zero, take it for a ride, look at your boost gauge, and then go from there. If you have a 10 pound spring, then it's gonna give you 10 pounds, 9.5, nine, whatever. And then you just act from that. So remember, every time you have a 10 pound spring, and we're gonna base it on the 10 pound spring. If you have 10 pound spring, if you want 15, you're just gonna add five. If you got, you want 20, you're just gonna add 10, and so forth and so on. So. Not, not too not too hard. I think the hardest part is actually running all the lines, vacuum lines and shit. Um, but like I said, I did, it, I did it by color. So like that, you guys don't get confused. I also put the numbers on the solenoids so you know exactly how, how it goes. The cylinder number two has a blue and silver wire and a black wire. So, so you know that's number two. That's the one you're gonna cut. So let me pull those up connectors out so I can show you how to put the resistor in line with that so you don't get a um, a coat. All right guys, for the uh, kinetic harness, you're gonna take this little green tab, that one right there, I don't know if you can see it. You're gonna take that one out and then inside here, you're gonna need a pick and you got like little two clips. You're just gonna push it up Oh, like that. See? Comes out. And then you do the other one. Same thing. And all you're gonna do is push down. And then this thing will come out. Oh, right here. So, yeah, that one comes off. Then you got your kinetic creation harness. And it doesn't matter the color where it goes. It's just, you can just put it on and that's it. So, you're gonna stick one on the back. Until it clicks, just like that, and then you take the other one, put it in there. Until it clicks, you see the two right here. And then you're gonna install your lock, the green connector, like that, and that's it. Then you plug it into here. And it's already wired up. Of course, I'm gonna move this somewhere and fix all this. You have these two exposed. And this is where you're gonna put the transistor or resistor, whatever you wanna call it. So, transistor, pretty much like this. Like that. I don't know, you can see right there. 
So you're just gonna, obviously you wanna solder it or wrap it around here or whatever is better for you. And then of course, um, put heat shrink on both sides. So whenever you're done, you can just heat shrink it and um, it should be pretty good. And this, this is gonna eliminate your um, check in your light. Now remember, if you're not doing the kinetic, you're gonna cut these two wires, like right here, right? You cut them, and then this one, you're gonna extend it to any ground, and this one is gonna go to the orange wire, right? And then your transistor is gonna go back here because you cut the harness. You know what I mean? The kinetic send you like this, so it's a lot easier, you just put it on and that's it. Pretty, pretty simple. Uh, I really hope that I explained to you somewhat fairly how this works. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, let me know, I can respond on on um, eBay. I mean eBay. <laughs> Fucking Henry's gonna put some shit on this. <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> Um, you can you can send me a message on YouTube. You can send me a message on uh, Instagram, Facebook. Um, you know, whoever follows me and shit. You can ask me some questions. I hope you like the video. One last thing, I need to show you something that I got. I'm just gonna throw on the video. So look at that. Wow, the new daily weekend car, whatever you want to call it. One owner with 49,000 miles. Check that shit out. All stock, except for a tune. So, this one came from Dallas, so that's next, along with all the line that is waiting on me and shit. But, check it out. The seats are like mint, look at that. 49803. Even came with the tuner. I got the, uh, look at that. Man, that's fucking badass. And the owner's manual. So, super excited. Um, this guy came because he needed to put a Westgate on. And I was like, sure, whatever. I'll put it on, no problem. Then, like, hey man, I'm gonna be getting married and I'm gonna be selling the car. And I'm like, dude, give me the chance before you post it for sale. I'll tell him, man, give me the chance before you post it for sale. I don't, I don't have the money, but you know, fuck it, I go to the bank or, or something. So he did, he called me, he gave me the price. We negotiated a little bit and I fucking got it. So I'm super excited on that one. I have an exhaust. A single exit exhaust that my friend uh, Jose gave me uh, yesterday. He came and dropped off his motor that I'm going to be building. And uh, he gave me this 3 inch. It's kind of like an MPX modifier or something with a single exit. Um, and that's his motor that I'm going to be building. But I also have another single exit here from Modern Performance that they don't make anymore. So I'm debating which one I'm going to put. But that's the only thing I'm gonna put on the car. Well, the engine still has the stock airbox. I mean, everything is stock under the engine. So the only thing I'm gonna be doing to the car is gonna be exhaust, coilovers, wheels, and some maintenance. And that's it. I mean, it already has a tune, stock turbo. Maybe later down the road, I'll put a big wheel stocker and change it from the SCT tuner to a Diablo Sport. But Later on, I need to finish my race car first, and then I start putting money on this one. So, yeah, man, I'm super excited. Uh, I hope you guys like the video. Like I said, a little confusing, but if you have any questions, let me know, and I can help you as much as I can. So, if you need anything else or you want to know how to, um, let me know, and I can try to squeeze it in. This one was really easy because I was already working on it, so when they asked me, I'm like, I got you, like I'm already working on it. So if you have any questions, let me know. But um, N2NB website is really, really, really good on showing the step-by-step. -step. But if you still have some questions, let me know because they only have it for stock turbos. Of course, I'll show you how to do it on the big turbo. And then also it's, it's the same thing. Um, 
And then on, on the settings, you have one that says top or bottom. How you controlling the, the west gate. Of course, you're gonna select the bottom. And that's for big turbo or small turbo, um, unless you're controlling the top, but most of, most of the people do the bottom one. So let me see if it's still open so I can show you where it says that. Ah, uh, right here. It says Westgate Control Surf, something like that. You can click bottom or you can put top. So skip on bottom. That's it, guys. That's all for this video. Uh, we have another one coming up too on my brother's car. Yeah, man. If y'all like the videos, shit, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know too. Not a big deal. But uh, we're going to try to make more videos. It's just hard because, you know, I'm making a video right now and I'm not really working on this car and I need to get it done. And until next time. Peace.